Okay, so um, I hope everybody everybody joined. We got we have the the use group on screen. Um, so just for um, an introduction of the meeting, well, first of all, if I didn't already say it, it's uh, welcome everybody and thank you thank you all for joining. It's nice to to have you all here uh, despite the the condition we have now. Uh, I'll try to make this meeting as comfortable as possible. Don't uh, don't be scared to to share your your action and question in the in the chat box. Uh, we will have uh, different parts in this meeting. So as the first part, we will present the activity of the of the use group and who we are. We should have also an intervention of Marco from the ESCA board to present the activities of uh, of the of FK as a whole. And then um, the CEO things will start. Uh, we will present what we did with the iBridge project. So the one you can know um, as the transition project that we did this year and we talked about last year already. And after this kind of um, throwback of the activity of the past year, we will have a, a small break. And then we will keep on with the, the future activities. So first with the elections of the new board, then with the, the new project that we will focus on, and eventually with a workshop um, that we, we will do together to, to leave you the floor about the education project. Uh, so I don't know if you can go to the next slide so we can present the... Um, the housekeeping rules of the of the meeting. Uh, so it's basically what I write you in the mails already. So we have the elections. Uh, you should have received a token, and a link will be published. So you will have to to log in uh, through the link with your token. Uh, your token is private. You can only disclose it with your uh, fellow delegates if you have one. And it's only one vote per country. Everything will be explained when it's time to vote. Uh, uh, you should know also that the meeting is recorded, uh, so um, you will be able to to look at the replay afterward. We will share it. Uh, we will share it with you. We might also share it on the on our social media channels. So if you have any problem uh, with it of disclosure, you, know, you can reach out to us uh, before we we share it. Uh, I also ask you to switch off uh, the microphone and camera. Um, Nimrod, if we can switch off your camera to, to have a better network, to have only the, the speakers on screen, so it, it would be more convenient for everybody. Okay. And if, yeah, if you can just uh, switch off the camera so it doesn't uh, mess with the, with the network and doesn't overload the, the slide. And if you have any reaction or question, you can you you are free to share it in the in the chat box. And if you happen to be disconnected, uh, I think the easiest way is to leave the meeting and join back and refresh your browser. But hopefully this this won't this won't happen. Next slide, Antonio, please. So a quick presentation of the use group. Uh, so you have the faces on camera. Unfortunately, Natalia will join late, so she's not there yet. Uh, but this is the seven people of the use group. We we work with uh, an election every year. Uh, every member is elected for two years. So currently, I am the, the leader. This is me speaking on the left. Uh, then the, we have two newcomers from last year, uh, Amaranta Cantero. Hi, Amy. Hello. Arga, Arga from Serbia. Hello. As you can see up there. And for the people that uh, were there already uh, last year, uh, so the first one is Selena. Hi, Selena. Hi. We have Simo as well. And Olga. So Simo Hi. and Olga are basically the one you see posting the everything on social media. So. You, you might have heard of them already. And Natalia also from Slovakia that will join a little bit later and you will see uh, with the, um, during the workshop. Okay, if we can, if we can go on. So 
So this is just a, an overview of the of the activities we had uh, for the past year. So of course the main event is the DFK youth meeting, uh, the the meeting we are having right now. So the AYM it's is a huge a uh, huge deal of work even when it's online and uh, beside that we also have a seat in the FK board uh, as, a, as a youth group to make sure that the, the young people have their voice heard so I do participate as a leader but uh, legitimately everybody can participate in the youth group to the FK board meeting and we also hold uh, a mid-term youth group meeting in usually in Brussels uh, it's the picture that you can see on the top where we we gather the the people elected to to discuss about the activity and the strategy of the the end of the term so the the few next months so it's a very important meeting as well and what we what, what we also do sometimes it's uh, kind of advisory uh, with the the pharmaceutical company like we did this year in Brussels with Jensen so it's the picture you can see at the bottom uh, so it's demands that come from the pharmaceutical companies directly to us. Uh, so it's it allows us to bring the patient perspective as well into their development. And as a matter of communication, uh, we we share articles uh, on the FK in the FK magazine. So I don't know if any of you have read an FK magazine already or know that it exists. Well, if you if you haven't, I strongly encourage you to to take a look at it. It's it's a very well, well done, and it's also a good way to have news uh, of the activities of FK and not only the youth group but the, the FK members as a whole. And what we also do because we we are young and we need to to target young people is to be active on social media, of course, to to share our our activities with the with our community. So we are active on Facebook regularly, and since uh, this winter, we also have a, an Instagram page. So feel free to go to go like it if we if you haven't done it yet. And as you may know, also we we focus on one particular uh, project every year. So as we discussed during last UIM for this year, it was the project about transitions that we then we named uh, iBridge and we will talk about it a bit later before the break today and we will also launch a new project for for the next year this one will be about education and we will have uh, a full presentation and workshop about it so uh, I will spare the detail for now okay so that was an overview of the of the FK and I think you can Antonella go on with the macro presentation I see that Marco has joined and I will I will keep the the presentation about our bridge for for a bit later. So now let's give the floor to to Marco uh, to present the activities of the FK board. Uh, so and if, we switch off our camera. Yeah, as Marty, so you to switch off the, yeah. of the camera so we, you can leave the floor to Marco. Hi everyone. I hope you can hear me. Uh, this is um, an online event, so uh, we usually say hopefully the the internet will serve us and we will have a stable connection. Um, welcome everyone also from, from my side. My name is Marko Perović. I am member of the of the FK uh, board. I think I know most of you and we have also spoken um, we, we met, uh, some of us at least met last year in, in Brussels during the uh, youth group uh, meeting. I, I, this morning I was traveling uh, for a mini holiday and, um, and I kind of remembered how it was last year. And I know I was also traveling uh, last minute to, to Brussels to meet you all. And uh, I kind of miss this, this physical contact and I'm sure we all do and um, it is indeed you know we are all physical people and uh, I think we are also missing uh, the opportunity to see each other to talk face to face to each other and I think um, a large part of, of uh, youth meetings and of meetings in general is to kind of get the feeling or the sense of, of the other person 
and uh, also be able to share and listen and um, talk and also think about um, us and, and what we do. But I also know that this, is, uh, this uh, COVID situation will go, definitely, one way, one way or the other. We know that uh, you do during time, uh, we will have uh, a response that is better and more effective. And uh, over time, hopefully, we will go back or we will go to a new normal. And uh, certainly, uh, the situation will change. But hopefully we will see each other soon and hopefully already next year so anyway um my my job here is uh, to give you a presentation of what fk has been doing uh, in the past year and also maybe give you some background information that uh, you can use to discuss uh, your work during the day and see how and uh, in what way you can also contribute to the the FCA's uh, general mission, which is just to support the lives of uh, people who live with IBD and in, in broader terms, anyone who is affected by IBD. So their families of those who live with IBD, but also their friends and close close ones. So um, I will, I am ready for a presentation. I see that our presentation is here. Um, you probably know that in 2019 we prepared and uh, our General Assembly adopted uh, the new, the new um, FCA strategy. And before I go there, I just need to know if everyone can hear me because I didn't ask that. So in case you cannot hear us, I believe that Ant or someone uh, in, in FCA or you guys can also indicate and uh, write in your chat box if you have not been able to follow or if you lose me hopefully my my uh, internet connection is still uh, stable so um i will also keep an eye on the chat box in case you have any questions thank you pantelis very much appreciated to see that uh, it's still working well. Anyway, so if you if you if you have any questions, if you have any comments, please do comment. I will keep an eye on on the chat box and uh, uh, Martin and uh, other other members of the board of the youth group will also uh, be able to follow. Uh, I will start by saying that we have um, I would say five important uh, pillars that keep. Uh, the strategic approach. This is networking, awareness raising, advocacy, empowerment, and then solidarity as a cross-cutting principle. I think this is very important when we talk about any activities that we do or that we plan to do. I also think that we also need to think how we, uh, how we do it. So for us, partnerships and um, participating and working closely with other communities is, is very important. And I think in a broader sense, IBD community works very closely with, uh, with uh, medical societies, with academia, with researchers, with government. So there's a lot of partners with whom we cooperate and form and maintain pa partnerships to fight uh, IBD and fight for better life of those who are affected by IBD. Awareness raising, on the other hand, is um, and, and the advocacy work at the same time are uh, extremely important because we do face so many challenges uh, that impede or limit our opportunities as people who live with IBD. And then it, it comes natural that you want others to know what you're faced with and you want others to understand your issues and why is that it's simply because this is the start for your fight this is how you you start your fight for for improvement you raise awareness among people on your problems and then you fight for them um, i think that people who live with ibd uh, often need support to better cope with their life to better fight for their rights, to better protect uh, and uh, protect access to different services, to medical services, to uh, work, to education. For that, we also need empowerment. Empowerment for us is a way to strengthen our skills, our capacities, our knowledge to 
better participate in this in this uh, joint endeavor towards finding uh, towards supporting better life of uh, people who live with IBD. And then solidarity. I think this is I think this is the basic premise. I think it's also the overarching principle for our work, which means that we work together and only together we can be stronger. And this is what constitutes uh, an IBD community. And I also think we we support each other because solidarity is also about supporting, be that individual support, like we all do. We share advice, we talk about our uh, illness, we talk about our experiences, we give um, a, a helping hand when when it, when others are in need. But we also support each other among the among the associations, among uh, the groups because this support then brings together uh, several groups into a network of, of, uh, of solidarity too. So let's go on. Um, I will be quick here because I just wanted to kind of remind the group in case you have not been able uh, to follow on what uh, the FKS, the European Federation of Crohn and Colitis Associations, has been doing in the past, in case you have not uh, really seen the latest uh, information about our work. And you are also part of this work because the youth group is part of FK. It's uh, naturally a one of the most important elements of, of FK. So in the previous year, uh, we have held our General Assembly. So some of you might have also participated or saw um, uh, a recording from the General Assembly that took place at the end of, of uh, May. Uh, before that, in February this year, just before the COVID uh, crisis, we held a, um, a symposium, an event during the, the ECHO Congress. You know that ECHO, the European uh, Crohn and Colitis uh, uh, Medical Association, holds their annual congresses in February in Vienna, and then EFCA held a specific meeting uh, with uh, doctors, with uh, researchers, with, uh, with uh, member associations to discuss the potentials and the opportunities uh, related to uh, big data and how the, the better data collection can improve um, can improve uh, the, the, the work um, on, on digital health also. Um, over the, the, the period of COVID, because situation has significantly changed for all of us, and I think we have all seen this shift from physical contact and physical meetings into uh, more online events. We held uh, so far two patient talks. These FK patient talks are uh, short and brief uh, online meetings where we discuss issues uh, pertaining to the COVID and issues that have risen as a result of a COVID crisis. We have had uh, two such meetings. We held two uh, FK patient talks online. Uh, one was at the, uh, in late June about uh, the medical supplies, the availability and uh, accessibility of medicines for people living with IBD in the time of COVID and how medical supply supplies are um, in, impacted by that. And then the second FK patient talks was uh, discussing uh, the impact of COVID on our mental, uh, well, health uh, and, uh, and well-being. So the second FK patient talk was held in the mid, in uh, somewhere mid uh, July, so last month. And we talked about what it really means um, for us in terms of uh, uh, what does isolation mean for IBD? Uh, because we have all experienced isolation at some point in our life as a result of, of, of the illness. But how, how do we experience this uh, new isolation um, uh, influenced by the lockdowns, by the mobility restrictions? And also, uh, we'll, we talked about what happens when COVID is finished and what is this new normality that we will be stepping into and how, how, do, you, how do you cope with the, the, the new normality and what is the new normality to start with and when, when, the, when, when uh, the COVID crisis, at least as we now see, 
see it is over. Then uh, looking ahead, uh, we will be holding our um, regular and traditional FK Academy. Uh, this year also, you know that FK Academy is an FK kind of certified or uh, FK designed um, course uh, that provides capacity building and empowerment to uh, IBD uh, pro patients, patient advocates. Uh, this year's uh, FK Academy will be dealing with uh, training on clinical trials, participation in clinical trials, what are uh, what they are, what is uh, what 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 do they encompass, and uh, what uh, participation in these uh, clinical trials mean. Uh, obviously, it will be uh, held uh, online. And uh, this will be also announced to, um, or uh, the, the the exact dates I think have not yet been announced. But one of these days, uh, uh, the associations, the the member associations, will receive uh, further details and invites um, for that. Um, uh, for the last couple of years, we are. For a long time now, we have had World IBD Day events. They are usually had, held uh, around the World IBD Day, uh, around 20th of, of, uh, of uh, May. Um, every year, this has been a landmark event. And around the world, uh, we see uh, many locations uh, lit in, in purple color in, color in recognition of, of, of this important day. Uh, but um, over the past, uh, in the past year, uh, 2019 in general was devoted to IBD and work. And this is in accordance with the uh, EFCA strategy adopted last year. And this year's topic, uh, this, sorry, this year's topic will, uh, will, next year's topic will be IBD and psychosocial uh, health and, uh, psych uh, and uh, psychosocial uh, support also. In, in, in recognition of the fact that IBD does affect uh, psychosocial uh, context of, of a person who lives with this illness. So this means that our activities will also be focused around this topic and every year this topic is slightly different so that we can shed more light into areas in which IBD life is uh, affected. And then there is a project on the, on, uh, that records the experience and uh, the perception on the quality of life of those people who live with perennial fistula. I hear a background noise. I don't know if this is me. No, Michele. Okay. So let's go on. Perfect. Um, this I'll, I'll I'll just walk quickly through this to say these are other uh, important initiatives we are we have been implementing and we are still implementing uh, this year. As you know, we always have surveys where we collect again experiences and perceptions of people who live with IBD, so that we can have an informed uh, position and so that we can uh, uh, raise awareness of uh, general population and general public about the issues IBD patients or people who live with IBD rather are faced uh, as part of the uh, upcoming uh, events. We will have a survey on couples with IBD and uh, pregnancy. Um, EFCA is continuously connecting, con uh, collecting and updating information about the availability of medicines, as well as new and innovative medicines which are coming up in, in the world market. Uh, we hope uh, we will have, we will have uh, more information about the, uh, about the availability of, of medicines across Europe. And, uh, and uh, this will also be a comprehensive snapshot that you can have a look at and see, for example, where your country is located in this uh, broader broader picture and understand what is the situation with medicines um, across uh, Europe and beyond. As usual, we produce uh, a magazine, which is, I think, a cornerstone of our communication activities. Um, the youth group has contributed before. We 
we believe and uh, we hope uh, uh, this will continue so that we can also cover uh, topics and areas of interest of uh, young people in Europe. And I think uh, contributions from the youth group are extremely important. And uh, then we have uh, a series of other projects. I would uh, maybe pick out uh, Horizon 2020 projects which have been prepared and it, they really took a lot of effort and investment from EFCA to prepare. I think they are particularly important because they imply or uh, they uh, foresee partnership of EFCA and academic community and researchers with support and funding from uh, European institutions which is uh, um, a, a part of, of uh, where EFCA funding uh, comes from. Let's go on. So just a few words about our general assembly uh, held on the 30th of uh, May this year. So we are now 41 countries, mostly in Europe, but also beyond Europe in other, in other continents. Uh, you know that very often we have uh, observer countries which are not yet part of the EFCA network, which are not formally members of the um, EFCA, EFCA uh, family, but are cl close friends until, until they do become and they are accepted uh, into EFCA membership. Uh, this year, Latvia has been approved as a full member and Trinidad and Tobago uh has been approved as a new associate member this is saying that the afca family is growing also beyond european borders or also beyond european uh, continent because i think that uh, communities around the world are now recognizing this uh, synergetic potential that afca is providing in this network of uh, national member associations that are really really strong and uh, supportive among each other and when i say member associations i mean also you guys because you come from national associations i come from a national association so let's go on indeed there are also challenges i mean we are faced with a lot of operational issues we are faced with the fact that unlike before uh, we cannot uh, travel, so we cannot meet in person. And uh, we have to resort more and more to online, online communication. Online communication has its advantages. It also has its disadvantages. I think we all prefer to see each other once in a while, even though it implies that we have to travel, we have to take days off. But it does bring this special value. Um, Unfortunately, we had to postpone some of our uh, meetings after March this year. Uh, and thus, uh, I think, for, not I think, but certainly for the first time in EFCA history, we held um, a general assembly online. It was a real challenge for everyone. I think technically it was uh, really, really complex. And uh, I think a great thank you to, to the EFCA office and uh, our IT staff who had really made uh, this uh, happen. I think in a similar way, this event takes a lot of investment to, to organize. I think it also, the, the COVID has also changed and posed uh, um, issues and uh, difficulties for associations at, at your national level because you cannot meet people. People are usually very isolated. They shield from, from COVID. They change their life habits. They also uh, see new problems coming up and the associations need to keep up with, with these new challenges. So how do you maintain this communication with your membership? How do you communicate with individuals who are very vulnerable? How do you uh, identify the new issues and how do you find the answers? And uh, what do you do to, to keep abreast of the, new, of the new developments? How do you know whether a specific clinic will change their, if, if an IBD, for example, unit will change the way they operate uh, on the account of, of uh, some COVID uh, priorities and urgencies. So I think it also, uh, this, this COVID situation also requires a lot of, a lot of work and uh, change in, in the way uh, many member uh, 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 associations 
uh, operate. And um, uh, let's go on. I think we're ready to move on. So I think um, uh, in line or ki kind of based on what I just uh, said before that I think the youth group also needs to think about or should be thinking about uh, what you as a group of, of young people who live with IBD and who also have this energy uh, to bring about change and uh, maybe generate some new activities. I think you can also think about, uh, you, you can first of all join this conversation on, on the COVID and IBD. Uh, whenever you have a new idea, uh, I, I think we are more than welcome to, to discuss them and integrate them into, into our work plan uh, for, for uh, the EFCA network. I think you, you can also work more very directly in your national associations and then uh, step in and uh, be active in in collecting information, in organizing online uh, discussions, in talking and uh, uh, to to other people, in even maybe better uh, networking virtually and online. Uh, between yourselves and uh, other IBD people who might be isolated uh, additionally due to, to COVID. And um, as I was saying, since uh, World IBD Day is the most uh, visible and uh, global cornerstone event of the year, we, we always join kind of forces on that day to show to the public and to the world, how many of us are there. So um, we go on because I see that my time is slightly running out. So I will be quick again here, hopefully, and uh, I hope uh, you can you can follow. Um, we carried out, when I say we, I mean uh, EFCA as a network, in fact, very many national associations carried out a COVID-19 survey to show what uh, people who live with IBD feel about uh, the COVID crisis and what their perceptions and experiences are. And I think that, you know, there are there is there is some data that is quite expected and does not really tell us uh, only confirms what we already hypothesized. For example, 85% of of uh, patients are afraid of getting infected, and I think somewhere we all are we all understand the risk and the the danger of um, of COVID, uh, not only in terms of uh, one's uh, personal health but also in terms of risks. COVID uh, presents for the health systems. Um, at least half of our community feels social isolation. I mean, this is uh, this is um, these are the responses of uh, I think around 3,000 um, uh, respondents. So half of them felt social isolation. And the study, uh, the survey was held in April. So I think it was held in the peak of the COVID crisis. Um, 98%, which means basically everyone had reduced their daily habits. And uh, I think this is a, an important data because deep down psychologically, it tells us that we have all, we, we have all changed our, the, the way we live day in and day out. And it does have some implications. We can talk about also what implications they are, but, um, the way we live our daily lives has been affected uh, by by COVID. Uh, three quarters of uh, people who live with IBD are afraid to go to hospital for their reg regular IBD treatments. 60% uh, think the stress will make their IBD worse. So they do recognize that they feel stressed, anxious, and uh, are concerned that this uh, state of uh, psychological health or mental health could uh, exacerbate their IBD. 63% uh, people of people will, uh, are concerned their medication in, uh, their medications would increase the risk of uh, COVID-19. And there was another data 
that uh, also showed uh, that among those people who have confirmed, who did confirm that um, there is a way to cope with COVID situation, as a high uh, percentage of these people identified member associations. So patient associations as a channel, as a means to improve uh, their life during uh, the crisis and also um, patient associations that are recognized as a means to better cope with these challenges. So this is, I think, the most important um, uh, feedback to us as representatives of member associations, as uh, active people, as uh, volunteers, uh, as professionals in, in IBD community to step up and uh, develop and design more and more response uh, programs um, to, to reach to those who are vulnerable and isolated and who need additional support to better cope with uh, the COVID crisis. Um, you must have seen on the internet uh, the secure uh, IBD and the COVID a registry where uh, where the data is collected from across the uh, world uh, on on patient outcomes uh, for uh, people for IBD patients um, infected with uh, COVID-19. There you can also see uh, some uh, more detailed statistical information of different uh, outcomes uh, for for COVID positive IBD patients. Can we go on? Okay, so I, I briefly mentioned this. Uh, we already held two patient talks as a, as a short but dynamic discussions around uh, hot topics related to COVID. Uh, we are hoping uh, we will be holding more of these when, uh, when September comes, so after the summer break. Um, to also keep the pulse of what IBD community needs and what are the perceptions of various, uh, let's call them stakeholders, but various entities within our community and, uh, and also to learn more what others are doing and uh, try to identify those activities that could be stepped up or replicated uh, as models of, of good practice. Um, Let's go on. <laughs> Questions are uh, this. I think this was this was um, uh, really quick. I think this is the the end of my presentation here. What I have tried to do is to give you an overview of the EFCA work uh, in the past year and also some specific projects and interventions we carried out uh, during the past year. I think, again, that COVID is a real challenge for us. I think we will need to, again, see how we cope with that and how we operate in future. But certainly, uh, we have um, an advantage and the strength of a network uh, that uh, builds on solidarity and on uh, common experiences and common goals. And again, uh, the youth group is really a part of that network, definitely, but it's also um, um, uh, an EFCA strength because young people are making uh, the change for, um, are able to make uh, this change and young people in general have the potential to to keep things going and uh, look also further. So I finish here. I see some questions. Uh, I see a question from Amaranta. Hi, Amaranta. Nice to hear from you. You are asking me why it's important for uh, young people to participate in INESCA. Well, I think in general, uh, I think that um, a network is only as successful as as um, as its its members really uh, expect it to be, and I think that young people again bring this perspective that is really really needed in a well-established network. So uh, by by participating in EFCA, I think you have access to experiences of other uh, peers. So you can see 
what other uh, what uh, what youth in other countries in other contexts in other locations are doing how they are doing uh what knowledge is they have and then uh, i think it fertilizes also our personal knowledge so when you think about efka you think about um a, a platform for exchange and uh, this exchange certainly strength can strengthen us so I think that one of the largest advantages for you as young people is to look out for more experiences, for knowledge, for more, uh, for more information, and then um, empower yourself to participate and to be active. Um, I hope uh, this this uh, this uh, provides a response to Amaranta. One more thing: I think we need to investigate and to make use of our potential. So I think that uh, the responsibility of the youth group is also to collect this, uh, ad, in, you know, these uh, proposals, these ideas, um, perceptions, um, individual positions, and kind of articulate them into a common uh, message or priorities from uh, young people who live with IBD towards EFCA, and then we can together work on on these uh, priorities um Selena is asking a question what about the future beside uh covid i think that if you take if you put covid aside i think our um a large um so to say priority or focus is to keep uh capacitating ourselves to be better informed, to have more skills, so as to grow into uh, effective advocates for a better life, of uh, better quality of life for uh, people who live with IBD. I think another task for uh, for uh, IBD community is to show that IBD is an illness that does not only affect your health status, that it affects your uh, potential uh, beyond that. So it affects your work, it affects your education. It also affects in a way um, how you contribute to yourself and to wider community. And it does affect your potential as an individual, if you, if you, if you, if you see my point. So I think we'll need to work more on, on uh, shedding this light EFCA has started this important work back in 2011, so almost 10 years ago, with an impact study that was exactly meant to show that more than health is affected by, that, by IBD. If you haven't, go to EFCA website and check this impact study and you'll see all of the areas where people say, yes, this is, this is important for me and IBD is affecting, is affecting me. So, Selena, I hope this kind of um, shows uh, what future what future we also uh, see. Uh, Martin is Martin is asking how does COVID impacted or will impact our work as patient representatives? I think I think that we again we need to find innovative ways to reach out and maintain a communication with those individuals who are affected and uh, design programs that could or uh, scale up programs that could support um that could support uh, ibd people we know that because when we prepared for the second uh, fk patient talks we we sent out uh, an email and uh, to our member association and asked about what uh, uh, associations are doing in terms of supporting uh, during COVID. And there's a lot of it going on. There is really a lot of activities uh, which are now taking place. But I think this uh, issue of isolation is really important to tackle also among young people, knowing that still there are people around the world who are being isolated or who are shielding. Uh, because of IBD, so we need to reach out to them and uh, kind of support them or include them in our communication and into our activities. And I think this discussion about what uh, what happens next and how we deal with uh, uh, the new normality 
or uh, what happens after COVID will also be an important uh, conversation to, to hold. Um, uh, Gabriela from Romania is asking about how to register for the future patient talks. Uh, Gabriela, I think you, you can simply keep an eye on uh, the social media from EFCA and there as soon as we uh, set this uh, next event, whatever this event is, this will be announced uh, through uh, social media and there's always information on how you register. Indeed, uh, because this is online, you you usually need to register so that you receive um, a link to connect to. So certainly uh, this will be published. Just keep an eye on, on the media, I think on the Facebook uh, primarily, uh, and uh, information will, will be distributed as soon as we know the event. Uh, and, uh, I see a question from Reke. Is there any relative sitting in the board for youngsters? Um, I, 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 from, I, the, the, the way I understand your question, Rege, is whether um, a youth representative is sitting on the board. No, but I leave. I think Martin uh, can uh, res provide a response uh, um, to that. So uh, I, I. I'll take one more question from Nimrod. I see a question from Nimrod, and then I I, I kindly ask Martin to kind of uh, maybe provide uh, the answer to this if I if I understand well, or Reggie would would like to maybe explain a little bit about the question. Anyway, um, uh -huh. anyway, so to to say to Nimrod, I have no idea. I don't know what the vaccine will be. We hope uh, it will be there, it would be effective. We know that vaccines in general are effective to deal with uh, epidemics. Uh, but certainly, uh, and this is, I think, uh, the official position of every patient community, they have to be reliable. Uh, they also have to be based on, on evidence and they have to go through clinical um, trials. So I'm not an expert. I'm not um, a medical professional, so I cannot give you a medical uh, expert opinion, but we are certainly hoping to see ways that will control this epidemic better and this that would then contribute to better quality of our lives, I think. Um, yeah, so I, I also see um, uh, Martin has responded to Regia about the fact that youth group has a place on the EFCA board, but then Regia was, was thinking about whether uh, people and relatives of those who have IBD can participate uh, in, in uh, the activities and uh, on uh, youth uh, group uh, board. I think that usually uh, uh, the, the youth group consists of uh, young people with IBD. However, I think it's also important to recognize um, the support and help that is being provided to IBD people by, by their friends and, and relatives. So I think in the, in the implementation of activities, we most certainly welcome uh, anyone who is affected by IBD in any way. Uh, we, we see a lot of activism from mothers, from fathers, from parents in general, from uh, caretakers of, of uh, specifically young people with IBD. We see a lot of uh, involvement from partners of uh, people who live with IBD too, as well as uh, other relatives and, and friends. And I think it also speaks to the true kind of scale of impact of, of IBD on, on uh, young people. So I stop here. I uh, will be with you until the end of this, um, of this uh, session, uh, until the break. I will be here also if you have any questions. Uh, I forgot to mention in my introduction to apologize on behalf of Kira. Kira was unfortunately um, called for work because, and this is one other COVID, I think, uh, 
um, influenced impact in a way she 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 had to work so she couldn't participate today we were supposed to do it in in uh, in a duel uh, but she's sending her regards and uh, she was really sorry she couldn't attend i hope I managed to transfer to you some of the information and uh, the work uh, on, on the work that EFCA has been doing. I stay uh, here to answer any other question you may have. And also, as I was saying, as Kira and I were saying from before, EFCA, is, EFCA board is there also uh, to uh, provide any support and help to the youth group in recognition of the fact that young people are the, 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 the potential and the strength of our IBD community. So I stop here. I thank you all. I also thank you all for your questions. These are really some inspiring and challenging questions that you guys are posing. So thanks and uh, over to Martin. Uh, thank you very much, Marco. Thank you for, for your presentation. And we wish all the best for, for Chiara in this hard situation of hers. And to answer to Rika's question, of course, uh, we don't discriminate uh, people whether they have IBD or not. Uh, anybody that is impacted uh, by IBD uh, can can be part uh, of the of the youth group. Can be a delegate. Uh, it doesn't have to be the the ill person. It can be a relative, uh, of course. So it doesn't it doesn't makes any any problem for us. And Antonella, if you can go back to, to the main presentation so we can keep on with the with the meeting. And in the meantime, if you have any further questions about uh, basically anything or reaction, uh, feel free to share in the in the chat box. And again, we will collect the questions and reply at the end. Okay, so before the break, uh, we can finish the, the presentation of the activity for the for the past years. Uh, by presenting the iBridge project. So you have heard of it already um, about the transition project because we addressed it last year during the YM and we talked about it quite a lot uh, since then. So basically this project is about, um, it's focusing on the, the transition for pediatric to adult care and the challenges that it may cause to, to the, young, the young people with IBD that have to change hospital, have to change uh, uh, gastroenterologist. Uh, so this project has been running from uh, 2017, so it's uh, not exactly new. Uh, but what we did is to basically make it come to an end and uh, conclude it by adding um, a communication strategy, so kind of a, a graphic uh, visual identity that you can see on, on the right. So we created uh, two logos to communicate on it, we came up with a name as well. So um, we can refer to the project with uh, its, its proper name and, uh, and graphic identity. We also used a survey that was done by the previous youth group in 2017 uh, that was shared with the, the young people of Europe to see the, the challenges that the, the were faces. So this report is available on, on the website, uh, a dedicated website that we created. And this is the, the main milestone actually that we did. Uh, I think you can go to the next slide to present it. So this is just an, an overview of the main page of the website we created this year. So you have the, the link if you want to take a look and see the, the spirit. For now, it looks kind of catchy because it's not uh, totally finished yet, but the, the main idea is there. So basically what we did is to come up with, uh, with information from, uh, from the, um, the survey report first, but also from interviews. We did some interview with uh, pediatrician, with professionals uh, to, to share the ideas. We, we also connected with associations uh, to, to have an idea of the, the main challenges and good practices uh, that, that we can have during the, this transition period. And we divided the website into four main categories to target the different people. So the first one is the patient, of course, the patient that go through the transition. Uh, we have kind of, um, a toolbox and, uh, and good practices to, to follow to kind of ease and have a soft way uh, of going through the, the transition. 
process and afterwards there is also the doctors that are impacted so we kind of sending advices to the doctors to ease the, the conversation and is the the process uh, so for the sake of the patient and the the third category that is impacted by this transition process is the the family so the relatives as a whole so we also have a bit of advices for for them and eventually the association so this is for for you and i the the local association what can we do and examples of things that are already done to to give kind of example of uh, of what can what is possible so yeah it's four categories with the same the same shape uh, providing kind of toolkit for um, for every all the whole population that can be impacted so this was uh, done with the the a bridge project for this year so now i call the the official closing of the project because we we will uh, go on the another project next year that we'll discuss uh, soon after the break if you have any remark any reaction for for this you you are free to share it again uh, you will have the link also communicated uh, on our channels, so you can go take a look. And uh, and now, if you if you have any question, I give you the floor. And after that, I think it will be time for for a small break. So go ahead in the chat box. Shoot. Hey Dina, so thank you for your questions. Uh, yeah, actually, once the website is all wrapped up and finished, uh, we have the possibility to have the source code exported to other population, uh, other um, association to translate it uh, in other languages. So we already have a demand from Spain and we can, once uh, we know that we can do it with Spain, of course, we can uh, send you the, the source code and the material uh in in serbia and in every country to to, to translate it uh, kind of like we did with the with the survey about education that we, i will talk uh, later but it's it's basically something that we do in english because it's the the principal language but then we can obviously translate it in any possible languages I uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you for that remark. Uh, yeah, it, it took some brainstorm to come up with the name. I'm glad you like it. And the idea of having the the bridge inside was really to, like we saw on the uh, on the previous slides on the logo, to have kind of have a bridge uh, from the child to the adult, uh, what we call bridging the gap between the both population. And so the project was here to to aim to facilitate this this process between the the two people. So it was really like a, a bridge to make an easier way uh, to to the final adulthood of the patient. Can we go back to the previous slide, please, Antonella, so they can? Yeah. So the, it's the the picture you see on the top left. So this is a, a logo that. Uh, was done by the by the user group that we came up um, basically during the meeting in Brussels. So when I told you, told you it was a very important meeting, this is the kind of thing we do in a meeting uh, midterm. Uh, it's all the things that we cannot do over the phone, basically. So it's also a huge, uh, huge time for us. Well, the, the website has been done by FK, so it's still editable. If we need to add anything, or as I told you, we will kind of reshape the, the pages. 
So everything is editable and we can make any change we want. So the idea now is to, we have it online, but the idea is to keep it alive and um, add materials, add uh, recommendation if we need, um, all the time, anytime we, we have one. But we, it's not something that is supposed to be left over on the side and untouched. And well, the, the way we can help with that is to uh, look um, to, in the website. Uh, so we'll, I, as Amaranta is saying, we still have uh, some things to fix. Uh, when it's done, you can go have a look and see and come back to us if you see anything missing, anything you'd like to add. Uh, it would be a pleasure for us to, to add anything that can make it more complete, of course. Okay, so so Natasha, yeah, I get your question, and this is part of the minor thing that uh, needs to get fixed. I guess my the the social media team has will have responses uh, for the the Instagram account. But yeah, basically the idea is to to have the also the Facebook, Instagram account, and the FK webpage linked to the website, so we can connect from from one to to another. Okay, so I will take a few more questions if there's any. And uh, Barbara, don't worry, the, the meeting is, is recorded. So we, you can see the replay afterward and uh, we can make you a, a debrief. It's not a problem, just try to fix your connection. We will have a small break and, uh, and take time to, to fix your connection if you need. And Tonella, can you go to the to the next slide, please? And uh, next again. Okay, so now it's uh, five past three, and we should go back um, around twenty twenty past three to to keep with the with the schedule. So what I suggest is that you take a 10, 15 minute break. Um, so we are five minutes beyond schedule, so maybe you can come back at uh, 20 past instead of 15. And and then we can proceed with the election. So the 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 room will be will be left open. So if you want to use the break to just chit chat with, uh, with each other and try to connect, you can do that. But I was, as I was saying at the beginning of the meeting, we will left also the, the room open at the very end of the meeting so you can have a, have a chat with each other. So now it's up to you. I will turn off my microphone and camera, but feel free to share anything on the chat box again, and we will collect everything uh, during the break. And then we will proceed with the election and the workshop. Perfect. So now it's time for, for the election. So we will give you a, a few minutes to, to vote afterward. Uh, but for now, I think Amaranta and Simo, if you are here, you can join on camera so we can have a quick presentation. And the way we, we are going to proceed is that you received a token, a private uh, login by mail uh, recently. 
we will also share in the chat box the um, the link for for the poll to vote so Antonella when you wait it you can share the link and so for this year we have two positions to offer and so Antonella just shared the link uh, the and we have two candidates for those two positions the first one is Amaranta that you saw earlier and Simo so they are both already in the board and they are standing for re-election and basically on this link you will have to click on yes i accept them in the board no or abstention so there is only one board per country so if you did not receive a token it means that it's your fellow delegates that has it from the same country so please connect to each other to make sure you you have the the right uh, the right answer and now we can i think we can give the floor to amaranta so she can present herself a little bit Okay, so I go, I go first. Uh, hello, everyone. I hope you can all hear me loud and clear. I am Amaranta. I'm 28. Uh, I'm from Spain. I joined this year because, unfortunately, uh, Kathleen has to uh, retire because of health issues. Uh, I hope I I want to thank her because she every time I have doubts, she answer it, and uh, I hope I'm. Um, helping to keep her legacy in the US group. Uh, I stand for re-election because I had a very nice experience working with the youth group and I believe I I can help uh, bring more new things to it. I have experience with a representation before but not in patients side in education stuff. And this one has been really uh, fulfilling for me because uh, this is like the first time I stand for something. I I am also uh, the person who who is affected by it, and I hope I can help others with my job. And um, I was also, and I also hope uh, next year we have a physical AYM, and you all come to Madrid like it was supposed to do, and we can all see each other in person. So. That's it. And um, yeah, um, my picture is silly, but that was the one I had. Sorry. Yeah, I, I mostly use when I work. That's always very cheerful. So thank you, Amaranta, for this quick presentation. Uh, we can have also the presentation of Simo, so you know both people you're voting for. Simo, the floor is yours. Yeah, hi. I hope you can hear me. I had some problems with my mic, but I hope it's working working again. I can see Mark is smiling, so I think it's working. <laughs> so I'm Simo, I'm from Finland, I'm 27, and I've been in, in the board like two years now. I'm mainly doing social media and working on the projects. And so far, uh, I have loved it. I love working with this this fellas and I hope I can still keep going on because I think that in the Europe the youth IPD youth still need some some improvements in life and okay I think I can send a text about this I think it would be easier for for everyone uh, thank you for for your presentation so simo will send a, a text in a chat box just did so now we will give you some time to to go on the link uh log in with your token and uh and click for either yes no abstention for both amaranta and simo and when you're the when we, you are all done we can we can continue with the with the education project and the workshop so we can give you a few minutes. Uh, I will check up on you at uh, half past three to see if everything is fine. And in the meantime, if you have any technical issues you, that you can't log in or things like this, uh, you can reach out to the to the IT team uh, on the on the chat box. So I just put again the the link so you don't have to scroll all up. And the token you have received uh, by email, the, the one with your name. You should have received it, uh, I think, yesterday or two days ago.
does anybody have issues with the with the voting technical issues Okay, good. I see a lot of votes done already. So Nimrod, we are taking care of your situation. As will I ask the IT team to to send you the yeah, perfect the the token again. So Mikele from the back office is looking into it. Uh, for the rest, is is everything okay? Can you write in the chat box if you have not voted? If you need more time. Okay, so I think we can go on with the meeting if everybody has voted. Um, otherwise, just take a few minutes if you need. And um, tell me, Nimrod, as soon as we fix your problem, uh, Mikkel is looking into it. Um, and you can you can vote um, in, in a few minutes. It's not a problem. The link won't close. Okay, so maybe we can we can go on with the the education project to to introduce it. So some of you may have already heard of it. We started to communicate on the on our new project. So this is a project that has been decided uh, in January during the the board meeting in Brussels, and that has been launched uh, in end of May. So it's uh, very recent, and it's the, the project we will focus on for the next year, and maybe the two next years. So it's, uh, it will be a, a great project, a huge project. And the first step of that project was to uh, launch an online survey. So the first one was launched in English in the end of May for the General Assembly of, uh, of EFCA. And since then, we had uh, a tremendous response from, the, from all the delegates to translate the survey and, and uh, diffuse it on the country. So I want to address um, a huge thank, thanks to all the people that helped us with the, with the survey, with the translation, with the, the communication. Uh, we, we had uh, a lot of, uh, of reply, very encouraging results. So we have 11 translations so far in uh, just a couple of months and over 300 responses already. So. It's huge for us. Uh, it's more than expected, but we are just on the good stop. So we, we need to, to keep on the good the good work. Uh, all the, the survey will be open until the end of year. So you still have time to translate the, the survey if you want to help. We can add more more translation and send reminders to, to add more responses as well. I think it, the results are very, very encouraging and we need to have um, a great project to to back it up and not only um, a survey so this is also why i will ask for for your opinion and your input and this is what we will do just uh, just now with the workshop so the, the aim of the workshop will be to define the needs of the project so for now we just send out the the survey with the questions uh, about how the the education has been done with ibd so mostly in university and um, everything after high school, uh, all the, the challenges or the, um, the drawback uh, that, that, that the impact that HBD can have on the, on the education course. Uh, but then we need the material, we need outcome, we need to reach out to, to people, we need to, to be allowed on it. So this is this is why we need your your input on this. So we will have the, the workshop just now. If we can go to the to the next slide.
So the workshop will, will last about one hour uh, and will be divided in three different parts. So the first part will be what we can call state of the art. So basically identifying the problem. Um, why is it important to, to address it? And uh, what a problem there is exactly uh, by using your personal experience, uh, what we, we you went through and everything that can help us. Uh, to really try to go around the, the whole problem and not forget anything and try to, to identify the, the key points that needs to be treated. The second part will be about identifying the resources that we have available. So it can be material, it can be project that has been done by your association or another association. It can be the people uh, to, to approach the decision maker, the the one that holds the information that we can reach out to if you want to do interviews, uh, anything like this. So the first one is about identifying the problem. The second one is identifying the, the resources. And the last and final one will be about the outcome that you want uh, from the project. So basically how to how to have an impactful project, how to convince uh, the important people, the decision maker to to follow our causes and to support uh, this project. And what should we deliver at the end? What should be the outcome? And what is expected? Uh, what should be expected from us and from the, the use group as a whole? And um, yeah, basically, what do you expect from the project? So this is the three parts that you will have to talk about. Uh, you will be divided in three, in four different groups. So this is what I sent you by mail and that we will have on the next slide. If Antonella, you can go to the, to the next one. So this is the, the group assignment for, for the workshop. Uh, Antonella, can you also share the, the link for the, um, for the breakout rooms? So it's the, it's not the same links. Uh, be careful. We had to change the links that you received by mail, unfortunately. So it would be new links that will be shared in the chat room. So you have it on the on the room. Uh, your name should be on the um, on the slide. So just click on the on the link. And I strongly encourage you to connect with another browser to avoid uh, technical issues. Usually, you work uh, better when you go with another brother. And um, so now I will leave you with uh, Amaranta, and Olga, Simo, Olga, Selena and Natalia for the workshop. And uh, they will be your facilitator. So I ask you to respect the instruction they will give you, to respect them, to respect the other people in your group and avoid also side discussions about anything that doesn't concern uh, the, the workshop and the, the assignment. Uh, as I said, we will have um, a breakout room of, at the end to just teach out about anything. So it, it can be nice to, to be efficient in this and focus on the, on the, the workshop. So myself, I will go from room to room to check in if everybody is okay. And if you have any technical issue for joining the room or anything like this, you can reach out to me or to, to the back office directly. So we are still here to, to avoid this kind of problem. So I give you a few minutes to go on with the workshop. Um, hopefully all the rooms are open and available. So I will check in in a few minutes. And for the one that are still listening to me and are not in the workshop already, just go to your room and I will check in afterward. Good luck. Okay, so I hope everybody is here. I have a message from the back office that says that all the rooms are empty. So that means everybody should have turned back the, the main room. So, before we close and we call it officially uh, a night and we close officially the meeting, I would like to thank you all of you for, for being present and uh, and participating in the workshop. I heard some very nice ideas from uh, from a few rooms, so we will go through everything and uh, and we will let you know. And don't forget that we, we are all connected together. We have a group chat. If you're not part of it already, you can send me uh, 
uh, ask me for an invitation and then I will add you. And then we will let you know everything that we are doing and feel free to keep um, to keep sending us uh, notes and suggestions during the year. And um, Antonella, I think we can go to the next slide to conclude. So yeah, it's basically just a, a conclusion slide. Uh, I will now announce the results of uh, of the elections, the moment you are all been waiting for. So with 18 participants to the election and 17 approval, Amaranta is welcome again in the in the youth group. Congratulations, Amaranta. And with 16 approval, Simo is also welcome back. In the Martin, they, they can't hear you. Oh, I can't. Okay, I will write it down in the chat. So everybody has the information. Amaranta and Simo. So, well, if you have technical issues now, uh, it's not it's not that huge to have a problem because we will uh, we will close the meeting. So again, thank you very much. Welcome back, Amaranta and Simo, and uh, hope to see you next year face to face this time. I hope this crisis will be finally over. And a big thank you again. And feel free to to contact us if you have any any remarks, suggestions, or questions. We are still here to work uh, all year long, so um, let's keep on with the good dynamic that we had lately. Uh, thank you all of you, and now I can leave the, the room open uh, for a while, so if you want to connect with your camera and mic to just chit chat about the weather or with just catching up about anything, please feel free. Bye bye. Thank you, our leader, for everything. <laughs> and thank you, dear leader. Dear leader. Yeah. And can you guys like share uh, your impressions about this uh, kind of meeting, like in the in the box, in the chat? In the chat. Uh, Martin, uh, I don't know if Martin is here, but yep. can we take can we take down the these lights so we can switch cameras if we are seeing uh, or hello sorry it's uh, Antonella just to let you know it's not possible to uh, remove the default image but if you click uh, here you can yeah. put it down but you have to oh. do it by yourself oh, so okay. okay okay so now if everybody can on the top can right the, yeah and so just if everybody switch on the camera we can see everybody exactly Sorry for the intrusion. Goodbye. <laughs> thank you, Antonio. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you also for thank the back you for office. Being here. Yeah, I didn't thank the back office, but you you did a great job. So a uh, huge thank for, for all of you. I hope everything went fine for everybody, even if we had some technical issues uh, with some people at some point, which is normal. But thank you very much for the back office for doing a tremendous job as well. <laughs> I feel so much better with the camera. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Because you love it feels more personal. It's because you look so pretty. Thank um, you. Oh, come yeah. on. Okay. But thank you. <laughs> Are you wearing your pyjama buttons or is like a full... <laughs> uh, no, that's a full dress. That's with dress. Uh, oh, I saw on in Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Right. My bottom <laughs> half is my pyjama, so, you know. Yeah, don't worry, it's Welcome okay. <laughs> I'm not worried, don't. <laughs> okay, guys, if any of you want to come, with yeah, the feel free to join. Chat, it's perfectly fine. I mean, you don't have to leave if you don't. If, I mean, uh, don't, don't be shy, Antonella. join us, join us. <laughs> Antonella, can we stop the recording now as the meeting is? Yeah. You think it's over? It's over. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, now you can insult uh, You want us to stop the recording? Yeah, if we can stop the yeah. recording. Okay, okay.